Other news today, it's a missing persons case with a lot of troubling questions. 11-year-old Madalena was last seen just before Thanksgiving, but she wasn't reported missing until last week. Now both her mother and stepfather are facing charges, and no one knows what happened to their little girl. It's haunting video of a missing 11-year-old girl. The just-released footage shows Madalena Kojikari getting off a school bus at 4.59 p.m. on November 21st, three days before Thanksgiving. Adding to the mystery, cops say her parents didn't report her gone for an astonishing 22 days. Now Madalena's mom and her stepfather are charged with failure to report a missing child. What do you want to do about a lawyer? A public defender, ma'am. Authorities say mom only raised the alarm on December 15th. She told cops Madalena did not have a phone. Authorities are now searching a lake near Madalena's home. We want to pray for her. We want to keep everything positive. Last night, the girl's friends and neighbors in her hometown outside Charlotte held a vigil in hopes of her safe return. We're praying for her. However she comes home, we want to bring her home. While the child's mother and stepfather are behind bars awaiting trial, police are asking anyone who might have information about the child to call them. Our Lowell Rose. Lowell, you poured over that arrest sheet from court today, giving a pretty detailed timeline. So take us to the beginning. That's right. Madalena Kojakari was missing for 22 days before things escalated to police. And today we found out the details into the claims on why the mother said she waited and the details into the night she was last seen. Law enforcement has a great deal uh, of information in front of them. They're constantly working through and constantly digging through to find more tips and leads. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is, we don't know where this young lady is. An arrest sheet shows the twists and turns investigators are dealing with in the search for 11-year-old Madalena Kojakari. Diana Kojakari told the school resource officer on December 15th, Madalena was missing after being questioned about the child's whereabouts. The mother said her daughter was last seen Wednesday, November 23rd, when Madalena went to bed. Diana stated her and her husband, Christopher Palmetter, argued that night and the next morning, he drove to his family's house in Michigan to recover some items. According to the report, the mother checked on Madalena around 11.30 a.m. on November 24th and noticed she was not in her room. Kojakari waited two days until her husband returned from Michigan before asking if he knew where Madalena was. The documents state he did not know and asked the mother the same question. The officer asked Diana why she did not report Madalena missing until now. Diana stated she was worried it might start a conflict between her and Christopher. At that time, the resource officer contacted the husband to meet at the school and requested assistance from two detectives. On Thursday, December 15th, Chris Palmetter stated that on 11-23-2022, he left his residence to make a trip to Michigan to pick up items. He advised that he did not see Madalena the day he left and believed the last time he saw her was a week before his trip. According to the documents, when the husband returned from Michigan on November 26, he asked Diana if she had hidden Madalena and Diana asked if Chris had hidden Madalena and they both said no. Chris did not report her missing to the police at that time. The arrest sheet shows Chris talked to Diana several times about Madalena whereabouts over the three weeks and both said they didn't know. During that time, neither reported Madalena missing to police. Each case is different from the other. They each have their own twists and turns, and, and that's why it's, it's very difficult at times for law enforcement to put the pieces together. Now, today in court, the mother's bond was set to $250,000, but the state expressed con extreme concerns should this mother be released from custody. This after prosecutors said she, ex she hindered the investigation several times. Now, if she is released from custody, she will have to wear an electronic monitor. Reporting live in Cornelius, Lowell Rose, WBTV, on your side. Lowell, thank you. We're getting in the case of the missing 11-year-old girl from Cornelius. 
Madalena Kojakari, a big police presence tonight at Madalena's home. Investigators on scene with what appeared to be evidence collection underway. We saw the crime scene van there. We saw an officer with a camera at one point leaving the home. Our crews have been there for hours too, gathering the latest. So with that, we want to get over to WCNC Charlotte's Austin Walker, who is joining us live with the details that he's been gathering throughout the evening. So what does it look like at the home right now, Austin? Yeah, it's wrapped up right now, Vanessa, but it was a very busy night outside of Madalena Kojakari's home earlier tonight. Again, a lot of investigators moving in and out of the home. Neighbors say they haven't seen this much commotion at the home in a few days. And tonight, as we're heading into the later hours, we are learning a lot more about her mother. WCNC Charlotte obtained these court documents Wednesday. They say Madalena's mother, Diana Kojakari, told detectives she believed her husband put her family in danger, but did not know what happened to Madalena. She says she also contacted her family in the Eastern European country of Moldova, who told her to call the police, but was hesitant to call. Diana says Madalena's backpack and some clothes were missing from their home, but also says her daughter wouldn't have any friends or family to stay with. Court documents also reveal while police were searching the home on Friday night, they noticed a piece of plywood blocking the kitchen. When detectives asked about it, Madalena's stepfather, Christopher Palmiter, says they were going to make a separate apartment. However, we found no active permits for the home. We are also learning Palmiter used to live in Grand Ledge, Michigan. The police chief confirming with WCNT Charlotte, FBI agents were trying to talk to Palmiter's family and working with the Cornelius Police Department. As night falls Wednesday, a big police presence outside Madalena's home, a dozen investigators going in and out of the home. You can see this video right here, a blue storage bin being taken out of the home and placed in a crime scene van. Throughout the night, flashes from inside the home through the upper left window. Again, things wrapped up about a few hours ago, and again, a lot of questions still left unanswered. Vanessa? Austin, thanks for that information from the scene. We know you also spent a lot of time at the Mecklenburg County Courthouse today. You were trying to yeah. find some other documents. What sort of documents were you t hoping to find here? Yeah, we were hoping to get that search warrant from the original uh, search on Friday that would show us exactly what investigators found inside the home that could help lead us to get more information on exactly what is going on right here. But those documents are not available just yet. We'll make sure to update you when we do have those documents in hand, go through them and report that to you as soon as we can. Vanessa. Okay, Austin, thank you so much.
Seven year old Madalena Kojikari faced new bond conditions. Diana Kojikari and Christopher Palmiter were scheduled to appear in court today. That didn't happen. Instead, the judge ruled the parents must surrender their passports if they do, in fact, post bond. The two were arrested for not reporting the Cornelius girl missing for more than three weeks. Now, they say Madalena was last seen on November 23rd. However, they did not report her missing until December 15th. Also today, a, ro a woman claiming to be Diana Kojikari's sister gave an interview to a Romanian reporter. Now, the woman's voice was distorted and she was not named in the interview, but it was aired on a Romanian TV station. The alleged sister claims that Diana told her she woke up the day of November 23rd. That was the day that Diana said that she last saw Madalena and that she felt drugged. She was vomiting, had nausea and dizziness. She said she went to Madalena's room and that's when she saw that Madalena was missing. Diana says that she didn't tell the police right away because she was afraid of her husband, Christopher Palmiter. Diana says she looked for Madalena herself and that eventually her sister persuaded her to contact the police. Romanian journalist Josefina Yos Pascal talked with us tonight about that interview and how it's being received in Moldova and Romania. And they uh, they are insulting her. I'm not gonna you know say what they're saying, but they're insulting her and they don't believe it's true and that she should tell the truth that she's no real mother. No real mother would hide this kind of thing. If you wake up drugged or feeling you know um, uh, druggish and your child's missing, you're gonna report to the police. Now we have repeatedly tried to contact Diana's sister as well. We have not gotten a response back yet. Tonight, we are getting a look at one of the last times anyone saw Madalena Kojokari before she disappeared. This is that video you see right now. It was released today, and it shows the 11 year old getting off her Bailey Middle School bus just before 5 p.m. back on November 21st. This is the last time police have been able to independently confirm she was seen. Her mother and stepfather claim they last saw her two days later how full of life she was and she was just so full of joy every time I s she would come to play uh, her and Cameron. Hundreds of people came together tonight at a prayer vigil for 11 year old Madalena Kojokari. The community is demanding answers after the little girl disappeared and wasn't reported missing for three weeks. WCCB Charlotte's Marvin Beach is live in Cornelius with more on tonight's vigil. And Marvin, people, they're getting frustrated with the lack of answers and not being able to find this little girl. That's right, Morgan. But tonight we learned about this little girl who friends say has a bubbly personality. They say she loved horses and animals. But as you mentioned, neighbors getting very frustrated. And the community still remains stunned about what happened. Also today, new court documents shed new light on exactly what happened in the days after her disappearance. Amazing. Tears and sadness in Cornelius as a community waits and wonders what happened to 11-year-old Madalena Kojokari. Of course, it's been beyond unbelievable. Hundreds gathering for a candlelight vigil in Smithville Park Tuesday night. Leanne Steffen came with her granddaughter Cameron, who became close friends with Madalena in second grade. She was a precious child. Her, she loved horses, um, she loved kitties. Her and my granddaughter shared in that bond and just hit it off. I do remember her just playing alone, so I went to go play with her and we just connected. The girl's mother, Diana Kojokari, and her stepfather, Christopher Palmiter, are both in jail, charged with failure to report the disappearance of a child to law enforcement. Kojo Kari appeared in court Tuesday. An arrest sheet is also revealing new details about the timeline of what happened. Madalena was last seen getting off at a school bus stop near her home on November 21st. Then on December 12th, a Bailey Middle School resource officer and a counselor visited the family home, but no one answered the door. Two days later, Madalena's mother called the counselor saying she would bring the girl to school for a meeting the next day. That's when she admitted Madalena has been missing since November 23rd. 
Diana Kojokari told police she and Madalena's stepfather, Christopher Palmiter, had an argument the night before Madalena disappeared. She says the next morning, Palmiter left for two days and went to his family home in Michigan to recover some items. When he returned on the 26th, they questioned each other about where Madalena was, but both said they didn't know. Madalena's mother told police she did not report the little girl missing because she was worried it might cause a conflict between her and the girl's stepfather. Over the past several days, FBI, SBI, and local police have searched inside and outside the family home and on the water at Lake Cornelius. Back at Tuesday night's vigil, the community just wants answers. We can't give up hope, and I know we're all praying. And I believe our God is big enough to do miracles, so I pray that this has a good ending. And today, that little girl's mother, Diana Kojakari, had her bond raised to $250,000. If she gets out of jail, she'll be on ankle monitoring. Of course, anyone who has any information about this case or who knows where this little girl might be is asked to call Cornelius Police or the FBI. Morgan and Marvin in court today. The district attorney told the judge he thought that if Diana did get out of jail on this bond, that she would hinder the case and that she has already hindered the case. Um, some more insight there. Still obviously unclear exactly what happened, uh, but not looking good. Marvin Beach reporting live in Cornelius tonight. Marvin, thank you. Continuing to stay on top of the latest in the search for a missing little girl out of Cornelius. New video shows the impound lot where key evidence is being stored in the case of 11-year-old Madalena Kojakari. Queen City News was the first to break the new information from the newly released search warrants in the case this week. Our Robin Kennedy is live at Madalena's home in Cornelius. And Robin, you discovered what authorities were investigating at this impound lot. That's right, Morgan. We have been telling you this week about a new search of Madalena's home here, as well as a search of her mother's car. Today, we found out where that car is based off of those search warrants. Inside this police impound lot is evidence that could tell investigators what happened to missing 11-year-old Madalena Kojakari. We know from search warrants executed in February that investigators searched Madalena's mom, Diana Kojakari's car, a green Toyota Prius, at the impound lot. The warrants do not say drugs were found, but they say a police drug sniffing dog alerted on the car after phone records led investigators to the vehicle. Ms. Kojari. Those phone records from Diana's distant relative show he made multiple calls to people involved in an ongoing drug trafficking investigation. I think while it's still a possibility, the police have not ruled it out, I'm sure. I'm still not ready to jump to that conclusion that this child has uh, been sold to a, a child trafficking sex ring or anything like that. The warrants say the family member told investigators Diana had asked him to help her with, quote, smuggling Madalena and her away from their home because of a bad relationship with Diana's husband, Madalena's stepfather, Christopher Palmiter. We reached out to the FBI and Cornelius Police requesting public records Thursday of any international travel by investigators since Diana is from the Eastern European country of Moldova. The FBI tells us they would not release that information until a case is closed. Right now, they just want to find Madalena. Personal belief is more that there is harm that's been done to this child. Uh, unfortunately, possibly dead and they're just covering up them being the parents though my hope would be that she's alive and we do rescue her 
Now, the search warrants also say that investigators took foreign passports from Diana and Madalena, as well as a Moldovan debit card from a Moldovan bank from Diana's car. I'm live in Cornelius. Robin Kennedy, Queen City News. For the first time, the Cornelius police chief is answering questions about the mysterious disappearance of Madalena Kojakari. Today marks four months since the 11 year old girl was last seen getting off of her school bus. Channel 9's Erica Jackson talked with a former federal investigator not associated with this case to get more insight on what is going on behind the scenes. Cornelius Police Chief David Balcom didn't hesitate to address the desperate search for Madalena Kojikari at a community breakfast Tuesday. We have detectives that are working this case every single day. It's just the, the fact that we can't talk about it. But just because we're not talking about it doesn't mean we're not doing it. Chief Balcom made it clear the investigation is not a cold case. Cornelius Police and the FBI won't rest until it's solved. This is not a standard kidnap or missing persons case. There's a lot of tentacles into this investigation. Retired FBI Special Agent Richard Coco explained detectives will treat the case as a rescue mission until they have a reason to think otherwise. Madalena's mother, Diana Kojakari, and stepfather, Christopher Palmetter, are in the Mecklenburg County Jail for failing to report a missing child. The biggest challenge is the parents and other people, their primary concern may not be the young girl, sad to say. It may be their own well-being. Court documents reveal Diana Kojakari asked a family member to help smuggle them before Madalena's disappearance. Investigators say that relative's phone records showed calls to people involved in drug trafficking investigations. Coco says investigators will work to connect evidence like video surveillance, phone locations, and DNA. Law enforcement has worked hard to develop not only a suspect list, but a witness list. They've got a lot of people to interview and a lot of people to talk to. Chief Malcolm is confident their work will lead them to Madalena. You know, that's been our goal from the start is that, you know, we're going to find Madalena. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow. <clears throat> you know, we're not going to stop. That was our Erica Jackson reporting. Cornelius police are asking if you, anyone out there watching, has any information that could help in this investigation, even if you think it might not be significant, police want you to give them a call. Also breaking the search warrants for 11 year old Madalena Kochakari's home in Cornelius will remain sealed. A judge sealed the warrants for 90 days at the end of December. That seal would have expired today, but yesterday the court extending it until April 19th, noting it's still an active investigation. Earlier this month, we learned Madalena's mom, Diana Kochakari, asked a family member to help smuggle her and her daughter out of their home. That family member is believed to be involved in narcotics trafficking. Madalena was last seen getting off her school bus on November 21st.